Thanks for joining us, guys. So this is Forge from Iron. This is a new little thing that I've had an idea of. You are the manager. I'm going to get people in. I'm going to get get guests in and put them in David Moyes' shoes. Not literally, but metaphorically. And I'm going to give any guests that come on 85 million quid. Not literally. I haven't got 85 million quid burning a hole in my pocket. Let's just get that out there right now. I haven't got 85 million quid in reality. I'm not going to give them metaphorically. Okay. So first person that I've got in my, the first person that's don't doing this ever is my Guinea pig. So if you don't see this, ladies and gentlemen, then this wasn't very good. And I deleted it. Um, so if you watch, if you are watching this, it must have gone relatively well, at least. So joining me in the hot seat is our regular contributor, Steve 50. How are you, sir? I'm very good. Thanks, Gatesy. Yeah, not bad at all. I have uh, drafted my son in today, James, who has just finished his GCSEs, because when it comes to players and who are good, who's good value, He's infinitely more knowledgeable than me. Mind you, as I said before, I think next door's cat probably knows more than me. Uh, <laughs> thanks for being a guinea pig. Well, I'm quite happy to run around and wheel and squeak if that is what's required. So no problems there at all. But let's hope, hopefully we can make something of this and it's a uh, series people can enjoy because I think it's a really interesting concept. And I well, think you've let's, frozen, let's see how we go. So, okay. Oh, have I? No, no, you. I'm still here. Can you hear? Can you see me? Yeah, yeah I can see you. I can see you in your <laughs> phone. Oxy internet, honestly. <laughs> I actually, I, I don't think it's the internet. I think it's, I think it's my computer. Sadly. So, yeah. But the, I'm, I'm told that I'm getting a new one. Uh, there's there's a I, I probably shouldn't say who but there's a there's a there's a mutual friend of ours steve who's sorting me out a new computer so i tell you what i'll have to I should probably leave it there friend at some point as well because actually i do all this off my phone i don't own a laptop mm. i'm much of a dinosaur you know if you've gone back to the jurassic period you've seen me wandering around foraging for leaves and things i mean i Oh no! I dislike computers intensely. Always have, uh, but I use them when I have to. You know, I'm vaguely computer literate. Yeah, fair but enough. That's why. I'm okay. Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. So, so, you so, so you've got eighty-five million quid. You are David Moyes now. You obviously you you know the current situation with West Ham. We're going into the Europa League next season. Yeah. Um, I think we're going in, if I'm not mistaken, we're going into the, to the group straight off the bat. We don't have to pre-qualify. So that's six extra great games straight away, bolted onto the 38 in the Premier League, plus FA Cup, League Cup, whatever. Now, I think it's fairly well established the positions that we're going to need to strengthen in, the, the main one being striker, but not exclusively. You could probably also say a left back, a centre back, maybe goalkeeper whatever you're the manager you decide you can also use free transfers as as and when you see fit if you think that they're gonna beef up the squad in terms of numbers and in terms of quality either or so you have carte blanche mr moyes i will press buttons and i will use we're going to use five yards as a, as the template for player valuations so if Obviously, if you say to me, player X, I will go on to five yards and put that player's name in. Whatever that player's valuation, according to five yards. So if it's a player for 20 million quid, then we'll take 20, 20 million quid off of the 85 million quid transfer budget. You're left with 65 million and you go on to the next player and so on and so forth. Okay. Sounds good? Sounds perfect. Okay. So... so Mr. Moyes, who's your first signing? What's your priority? Well, my first two signings would actually be free ones, freebies. They okay. would be Christian Benteke up front because he's a bit of a bulldozer. 
and I think mm-hmm. Moyes could get the best out of him. He's very Antonio esque, uh, and I like him. He's not everybody's cup of tea, but as a backup, yep. I think he'd be very solid. The other player I think I would get in on a free is uh, oh, what's his name? Joe Mario. He's been at the club before. He knows the culture of the club. He did pretty well when he was here before. I think I'd have those two as free signings because I think, although neither of them would be starters, um, they would be good squad depth. And in Europe, I mean, I think Joe Mario's played for Portugal, hasn't he? Portugal's that right? Yes. Portuguese. Yes. Portuguese international. Just checking with my... Uh, some with the encyclopedic knowledge. With your agent. Um, yeah. I, I'd have him as well. I liked him when he played for us. And he wanted to stay and he wants to come back. Uh, mm. So those are two free signings. I quite like the look of who we're being linked to with Alex. Alex Crowell, isn't it? Another Czech. Okay. Czech from Spartak Moscow, I believe. Czech from Spartak That's Moscow, right. I'm reliably informed. Um, from what yep. I've read about him, he's just another Sufau and Suchek in terms of work rate. So he would okay. fit right in. Just wouldn't stop okay. running. Okay, just before so. we go on to um, Kral, I've just checked, um, and I'm going to use, I use for the free transfers and whatnot, I'm going to use transfer market for this because they've got a little bit more or at least as far as i can see anyway i I can't find it so well on five yards if it is but according to this um jao mario actually has another year left on his contract so he wouldn't actually be free he's on he's currently he's currently on loan from inter milan at sporting lisbon according to what i've got in front of me and it says that his contract expires on June the 30th, 2022. No, Do you I still want to buy him? No, I wouldn't buy him. I don't think it's, <laughs> I don't think it's good value for money. On a free or on a loan, yeah, every, all day long. But uh, I think we can use our budget in better places than buying Joe, Joe Mario. Cause if so Joe, he's, he's off the list. He's off the list then. I mean, if Joe Mario... Um, if we got Joe Mario instead of Alex Crowell, I think that wouldn't be a good thing. <clears throat> so, okay. yeah, take him off the list and uh, okay. we'll see what we left so, over with at the end. But I can't so let's, see him going to him. Fair enough. So I'm just going to put into five yards Alex Crowell. So what I'm going to do, I'll just get this on stream. So that the people at home, I'm just going to go full screen just momentarily. So there he is, Alex Crowell. He is 23 years of age. He is a defensive midfielder. However, I believe he can also drop in at centre back and central midfield. So he's got a bit of versatility about him. He's obviously a Czech international tick. You know, I, I think that it's, you know, with the two lads that we've got in that are Czech internationals from Slavia, Prague, you know, I think we can say that the one thing that they give you is is hard work and endeavour. So that that's a that's a tick in the box for me. And, you know, 23 years of age, you know, he's someone that we could possibly get. Forty. If we get him for, I mean, it says here nineteen million. So as I say, we got we're going to use the price on five five yards, rightly or wrongly, of fourteen million quid. But I am going to go with this nineteen million because that's how I said we're going to do it. So okay, so that would then leave you with sixty six million to play with, essentially. Um, yeah. So does this does this still sound like a player that you want to go for? Yeah. Definitely. What I've read about him, he's, as I say, it's his work rate. He doesn't stop running. Yep. Now, we've already got three lunatics in the side in the terms of Sochek, Sufal and Fornells. They never yep. stop. And I'm not, that's not to uh, diminish the work rate for the rest of the team either, because I think it's really good. Okay. But okay. As, as, a, as West Ham... We what we 
don't have in terms of skill, what you don't have in terms of Paul Pogba, you make up for in terms of work rate. And that's yep. served us really well this season. So, yeah, I'd have him. Yeah. Okay. Now, goalkeeper would be my next uh, my next choice. And I think I'd go for Ariola from Fulham. I thought he had a really good season. I thought he looked accomplished. And I think he fit in well. And I really think we need uh, back up for Fabianski because two times this season in the warm up, Fabianski's gone down injured. And although Randolph's come in and done a job, I'm not convinced uh, that he's good enough quality. The City game being prime example, I think we'd have got something out of it if Fab had been in goal. So, yeah, Ariola mm. in goal. What right. I've just got him on fire right here. So I'll just, again, I'll go full screen with this just for momentarily, if I may, for the viewers at home. So there he is, or, well, we haven't got a photograph, but what do you do? Um, this is not my website, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, if there's bits and pieces that are wrong or missing, it's not my fault. Don't blame me. Um, 28 years of age. He's a goalkeeper, as Steve has said. He's French international. And he, according to five yards, he is twelve million pounds. Value for money, Mister Moyes. Yep, for me because I think he's a long-term solution at twenty-eight. The way he yep. performed for him was very, very good. Um, and keepers, yeah, it's the longevity we're looking at. You build from the back don't you build this is how I see it anyway you build from the back you build from how good your keeper is and we saw what it was like when Roberto was in goal every oh, you know, look, the whole... it, here comes a photograph of him now yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, when Roberto was in goal our whole team you could just see the their heads dropped with every mistake he made mm. so solid keeper. I remember when Phil Parks was in goal, you know, there was a confidence through the team that if it did get through everybody, Parksy was there. And that's what you need. So, yeah, I'll pay that for him. Yeah. So, I think that's, what, 31 million of our budget? It, you, at the moment, Mr Moyes, have £54 million left to spend. And then you'll be dipping into more freebies if you still want to beef up. Right. Now, my... I still have 56. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now... Would you go for Lingard? We haven't mentioned well, him yet. Well, this is the next one. Would I have Pereira or Lingard? Uh, I think on balance... Both of them, and then you could make the comparison? Yeah, let's look at both of them and see what, what the comparison would be. Okay, I'll put... I'll put Lingard in first... So just wait for it to load up on five yards. And then got, you know, he's what, 28 years of age, as yeah. I as I believe. So if I just get this up again on being for people to have a look at home. Okay, so Jesse Lingard, according to five yards, his price is 18 million pounds. He's 28 years of age. He's obviously, as we know, he's an attacking midfielder and we know he's English, obviously. It has him down as West Ham United, but he's really Manchester United's player at this precise moment yeah. in time. So, obviously, just keep that in mind. So, you've got 18 million quid for a 28-year-old English attacking midfielder. Yeah. Now, if I just take go back off of this... um. So, just whilst I'm getting uh, Mateus Pereira's information up on five yards, Steve, I mean, do you think that that's a decent price for the Jesse Lingard that we saw? Or, you know, does that represent what you would consider to be decent value for money? If we're getting for 18 million, I think it'd be great value for money. But I think United want 30, is what I read today. Now, if they came to us and said you can have him for 30 million, I'd walk away. Because I don't think he's worth that. Mm. Uh, 20 million would be a good price. 
25 would be the top end of what I go for for him. You know, because whether you like it or not, five million quid over 25, if you take five million out of your budget, that's potentially a so foul, isn't it? A left back. And I yeah. don't, yeah, absolutely. And I don't think it's really hard because he was brilliant first eight games. Mm. I think you're paying over the top for a player with absolutely no sell on value. If you go past 25, I yeah. think 25 is a bit steep, to be honest. But well, we want I've got so Pereira here, so let's just go full screen with Pereira. So there's Mateus Pereira. Now, he's 25, so he's a whole three years younger. His position yeah. is down. He, he has him down as a winger, but he, he can operate as a second striker, essentially, as well as a winger. Now, they have his price as £22 million. So the question is, on the basis of what you've got on five yards, again, this is, this is the barometer that we're using for transfer valuations, rightly or wrongly. Who do you think you would plump for on on the basis of what the information is you've seen on these two players, Steve? Um, and this decision is based purely on how well he's integrated into the squad and want to keeping, wanting to keep that squad balance. It would be uh, Lingard. Uh, 18 Lingard, million. okay. So uh, he was eighteen million. Uh, 18 million quid. So I'm just just keeping a track of this. So if we take, so that is 18 million quid off of the 54. So you are now down to 36 million pounds. Oh, I tell you what, I'm I might have to uh, go out and get a job if that's all I've got left in the bank, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> dear, 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 it could be life on Skid Row, couldn't it? Um, Okay, up front. Oh okay. no, you'd be you'd be sort of like begging. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, how how could I? Tammy Abraham. By? Yeah, Tammy Abraham. How could I squeak by on thirty six million pounds? I don't think there's the money left. Tammy. I'll tell you what. Uh, let's have a look. According how to much my is he going to come up for on five yards? Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, you got a problem here, Steve. I'm Go gonna on. I'm gonna show you the stream. If you want Tammy Abraham, you're out of luck because you've only got 36 million. And according to five yards, he's 41 million pounds worth of player. Wow. Okay. Mm. You weren't expecting that, were you? No, could I sell Anderson, please? <laughs> <laughs> Now, I think the 85 million quid is is probably in, as part of player sales. So it, I, I would imagine that Anderson and Yarmolenko and possibly Lanzini have already gone to generate 85 million quid. I, that's how I, how I read it anyway. OK, then. Uh, Ivan Tony from Brentford. <clears throat> OK. Let's see how much he right. is. So how much, how much have you actually seen... Of Ivan Tony, much of him, or is your son seen much of Tony playing for Brentford? Well, actually, to be fair, when we found out uh, how much Abraham of uh, Abraham's was, James instantly pulled up Ivan Tony and pointed meaningfully at his computer screen. So I'm I'm pleading the fifth and taking his advice on this. <laughs> well, according to Five Yards, Ivan Tony is eighteen million pounds worth of player. He is twenty-five years of age. He's a forward, and he's English. So, yeah. is is this who you would like to get in as your your striker option, Mister Moyes? Yeah, I think I would actually at that price because it still leaves me some budget for a left back. Okay, so Tony. 18 million quid. So you had 36 million pounds to play with. So if we subtract 18 million quid from that, we are left with 18 million quid, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. There you have it. So, and so far you've got in one, two, three, four, five players. Okay, left back. And let's do a complete mm -hmm. raid on Brentford. We'll go for Rico Henry. 
Ooh, Rico Henry. Now, let's see, just wait well, for this to. Yeah, there we go. Right, Mr. Henry. Henry. I wonder how much he's going to be worth. Excuse me. Yeah, James again. When as soon as I said left back, pulled up Rico Henry and pointed at his screen. So, uh, you know, he's more knowledgeable okay. in things than me. Now, I'll just get this up on on the screen for the, the ladies and gentlemen watching this. Rico Henry, according to Five Yards, 23 years of age. He's obviously a fullback. He's English and he is valued at £11 million, ladies and gentlemen. So, Mr. Moyes, do we have a deal? We have a deal indeed. Yeah, I'll take him. We do. Okay. Uh <clears throat> I think one final area. Uh, we so you got I got seven million quid left seven million to blow. Quid. Are you are you going to blow it, or are you now going to start dipping into the into the freebie market for reinforcements? Do you think, Mister Manager? Uh well, se seven million quid. I could negotiate a decent pay rise with David Sullivan off that, couldn't I? I've saved you seven million quid. <laughs> So we, James and I are just having a quick look at free agents because I've got no idea. I've got some here. I'll tell you what. Go on then. I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me just get – I'll get rid of five yards just for going to share uh, my other tab that I've got of free agents. Now, this is according to transfer market, but a free agent is a free agent. So it doesn't really matter. Just wait for load up. Okay. And there we go. Right. So free agents. So now these are these are players that right now are free. Or there is another page that I've got of players that at this precise moment on the 29th of May. 2021 are not free agents but will be in a maybe a couple of weeks times you know and to give you an example one such player I don't really think geezer I mean he, I, I think he's a little bit of a one trick, trick pony it's a geezer called Lionel Messi mm, oh yeah not, not too sure I'm not sure he'd make the grade actually <laughs> the uh but just going down this list of, of players that are currently free before we move on to players that are shortly about to become free, I'll just go full screen with this so that the ladies and gentlemen at home can have a good butchers at this and, and get their teeth into it. So <clears throat> Alex Texier is the one at the top, Brazilian, 31 years of age. He's been out of contract since, the, since New Year's Day. I was actually, coincidentally, I actually saw something about this very player um, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There was something just come up on my timeline and <clears throat> it was explaining about the club that he was at in, in China. The, the, the company that was backing the club pulled the plug and the club essentially just folded. So this guy's out of contract. So I, I think I remember he, he's been in China for a good, good couple of years. So... Mm, not too mm. sure myself, but there you go. You, but you go down the list. Look at this one here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you might not be able to see it at home, but Diego Costa, 32 years of age. Mm, maybe. Daniel Sturridge, another name that people might be familiar with. So there, there's, a, there's a few there, but mm, up, to, up to you, Mr. Manager. Well, I'm going to pass over to my uh, number two for his advice. Do you go for it, Jones? Uh, having a look down the list, it's the only one you'd sort of consider going for would either be storage or Costa. It'd be heavily dependent on wage demands. But we're thinking about centre-back mm. at the moment. Cent cent looking down the list at centre-back, I'm not sure there's anyone that jumps out or sort of appeals. Right, OK. I'll tell you what I'll do, just to give you a little bit more... I'll just get rid of that and then I will share the next tab, which are players that are currently under contract, but will shortly 
not be under contract. So here we go. So just like I say, looking here, the guy at the top, like I say, you might have heard of him, Lionel Messi. But they're looking down this. Now, look at this. You've got goalkeeper Gianluigi Donnarumma, currently on uh, AC Milan's books, but shortly about to become a free agent, as things stand at the minute. Memphis Depay of Olympique Lyonnais. Hakan Kalhanoglu of AC Milan. Jorginho Wijnaldum, it says of Liverpool, but I, I suspect he's off to Barcelona. Sergio Aguero of Man City, but again, I believe he's off to... Barcelona, Henrik Mkhitaryan of Roma, Eric Garcia of Manchester City. I, I, I'll be honest, he he would be one that would interest me if I was in Mr. Moise's yeah. shoes. You know, a 20-year-old a, a, a Spanish player with Premier League experience. I mean, if this guy is a, available on a free very shortly, centre-back, hmm, yeah, would be I'm... interesting. That's the one I looked at, actually, because, I mean, again, young, young player. Moyes would be able to get the best out of him. I would expect Moyes to get the best out of him anyway. And then he's got a great sell-on value. Mm. So, yeah. yeah I think... just, just looking here, his, his stats in the Premier League, he only made six appearances in the Premier League. Um, he was in starting 11, 8% of the season. He got 11% of the minutes. However, look at this. He's actually got a little bit of versatility about him because not only can he play centre-back, he can also play right-back. Yeah. I. Do you know what? I think I'd have him as my freebie because we've got also got backups coming through the under-23s that Moyes rates really highly. Mm. And, an, and him... Yeah, I add him to the squad. I think okay. there's a lot of potential there, and that's what you're doing with that free transfer. You're having potential because our first yeah. choice is Ugbonna and Dawson. Now they're two very experienced centre backs who'll be able to give him all sorts of advice and tips, and they're actually very good mm. at what they do. It it may not be glamorous what they do, but it's very effective. And yeah. But yeah, so put him in. So I think that about completes what I'm going to do with seven million left in the bank. You've got seven million left over, Mr. Moyes. And with that, you've managed to get in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players. If we also yeah. work on the basis that in all likelihood we're going to be, well, we know that Balbuena's going. That's a fairly well established yeah. fact. But I think it's fairly safe to assume that probably joining him will be Yarmolenko, Anderson, yeah. maybe Lanzini, maybe not. So if we assume that all three of them went and plus Balbuena, that's four. So you've got a net gain in terms of bodies in the squad of three players. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. I, I still think, even with even having done that, we're we're still fairly thin as a squad because mm. we. But with that seven million that you've got left, Mister Manager, you could you could maybe get in a couple of loan players, couldn't you? Yeah. So uh, yeah. So there we go. Back to I would get Joe Mario in on loan if he mm -hmm. would come. And who else is up there for loan at the moment? It's hard to say who else. Well, I mean, you, you probably, again, these are probably players. If I just tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, again, I'm going on transfer market. And I'm going to go and put in players who con whose contracts end in 2022. So these are players that as of the start of the season, we'll only have a year left. So these are possibly players that you could possibly get in maybe on a loan. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, no, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll put in players whose contracts end in 2023. I'll tell you for why, because with, with two years left on their contract, you could possibly negotiate David Sullivan's specialty of a loan with an option slashed obligation to buy all depending. So 
Wow. Now, I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what, this opens up a whole new dimension. So let me just go full screen with this. Look at that. Players who, as of the summer, will have two years left on their contract. Mohamed Salah is top of that list. Now, realistically, we're not going to get him in on loan. But let's let's just have a look down this, shall we? Um, Serge Gnabry at Bayern Munich. Yeah. Um, Casemiro at Real Madrid. Uh, Kingsley Coman at Bayern Munich. I mean, there's, there's quite a few players that have two years left on their deal and may possibly be pickings for getting players. I mean, some of them, I think, are unrealistic. I mean, Yuri Tielemans, no chance. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there's quite a few players there. I mean, Angolo Kante, I mean, he's 30 yeah. years of age now. I mean, two years left on his deal. Could he be someone that maybe you could go to Chelsea and say, I tell you what, we'll we'll take him on a, on a year's loan with an option to buy or an obligation to buy, however you wanted to do it. Um, Jimenez, uh, Atletico Madrid, a pa- a pa- I can never pronounce his name, Apamecano from Leipzig, centre-back. Take your pick. I mean, yeah. it, there's, there's a lot there. Okay, so who am I going to go for? Because... I think realistically, I think probably most of these ones, to be honest, probably not. In no. my opinion, I think these are probably gonna be out of our reach. So let's just have a look on the second page. Uh, bu- 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 I mean, you got Koulibaly. I think he's probably on his way from Napoli. Yeah. Soyuncu from Leicester. Hmm. Now that could be interesting. Yeah, uh, you've got, uh, well, I'm trying to think. I remember when Wilfred Boney was good for Swansea. Uh, is it Wilfred Boney? No, sorry. Mm. Wil- Striker, sorry. wasn't he? Yeah, I'm looking at Wilfred Sahar. Uh, ah. Now. I don't think he's going to be coming to us, in all honesty. But No, I don't, actually. Uh it would be nice. But I'll tell you one. There's the, here, here's, here you go, Mr. Moyes. Here's, here's a name to throw at you. Now, yeah. if Gonzo from Hammers Chat happens to watch this, he'll he'll endorse this one. Adama Traore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm with Gonzo could on that. Be, I'd have could him. Could he be a player that you could get in on a loan, maybe? If I get him in with on... With an option to buy. Yeah. Yeah. Put yeah. him in as a loan signing, because I think... Okay. I think he's brilliant. I think he terrifies defences. You know, he's he's built like a brick wall, isn't he? <laughs> Let's be yeah. fair. You run into him and you're just going to bounce mm. off. Uh, high high intensity, high pace, high work rate. Yeah, I'd have him. And I'd want one more player in on loan, and this will be controversial, or on a free. Yeah. I'd like money in on a free. Sorry, who? I'd like uh, our Arnie back again from China. Right. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me just get him up on transfer market. There he is. Marco Arnautovic. Yeah. Now, according to transfer market, his contract expires in December 31st, 2022. So he's got roughly teams left as, as the season starts. So again, could be someone that maybe you could get in on a, on a short-term loan or season-long loan or something like that, or maybe just buy his contract outright. I mean, I mean, it could, again, I said we'd use five yards as the barometer. I mean, that they've got, Transfer market have got him down as a nine million pound player. Tell you what, I'll do. Let me just come off of this. Let's just remove that. I'll go on to five yards again and I'll put Arnautovic in and see what they value him at. Because it might be, it might be that if he's, you know, if he's seven million pounds player, then you, you might be looking to maybe get him in on a permanent, maybe instead of going for a loan signing in Triore, perhaps. I don't know. Let's have a look. 
just waiting for it to oh my computer uh, the ring of I doom oh now of he wants to come back and he's willing to take a big pay cut to do it uh, yeah. and also team in China have financial problems as well and can't afford to yes. carry on paying him in the week so it might be gappy just to give him away I don't think I, I got a funny feeling that Five Yards doesn't like Chinese based players because I've put in Marco Arnautovic and it's as if he doesn't exist so not too sure there so as I say, transfer market have got him down as a nine million pound valuation. I rather suspect maybe you could do a bit of business. I mean, could would yeah. seven million pound be enough? Maybe. Yeah, I think. I think more than because they're paying him well, best part of a million quid a month, aren't they? And they just can't afford mm. it. Them. So I think you could get Arnie in with the rest of the budget, and. Um, so, with that being the case, though, you wouldn't be getting Traore in on loan. Because, obviously, you, you, you'd you need to finance his loan from somewhere. Yeah, true, true. Uh, so, what would no, be, what do you think, Traore on loan or a £7 million pound permanent for Marco? Traore, for me. Yeah? Yeah, he's younger. Okay. He's, I just think he would be more effective in a Moyes team. Not saying Arnie what wouldn't What did we be, pay for but... Lingard? Was it 1.5 million or something like that, I heard, was was what we paid for, for Lingard with roughly the same amount left on his contract at the time that we got him in? Because, yeah, he had 18 months left on his, his Manchester United deal when he walked through the door at London Stadium. And yeah, Triore and... will have just a little bit more than that on his... Wolves deal from what I've got here, so maybe two million to get yeah. him in on loan. With add-ons, so Jesse went up to two million, didn't he? Because we qualified mm. for Europe, it was five. Yeah, yeah. No, two I think million probably two million loan. there or thereabouts. Yeah, you could get, get a Triore in on loan. If I couldn't get Triore, I'd have Arnie, but Triore would be my first choice. Uh, okay, again, I think you've done some good business there. Go on then. So how does it all look at the end? Well, you've got Christian Benteke as a striker, but as you've said, essentially he would be a, a backup, someone to rotate with um, Mickey Antonio, give him a little bit of a rest here and there, take the stress off of him. Yep. Alex Crow again to to supplement. Declan Rice and Thomas Socek, or maybe allow a little bit of a formation change and maybe play three central mids. Who knows? Which, you know, yeah, that would make us very strong, actually. Yeah, um, Alphonse Ariola, 12 million quid goalkeeper to compete in the first season at least with Fabianski and then long term beyond that point be the number one. Jesse Lingard. Yeah, speaks for you know that that one's a no-brainer in my opinion. Although mm. there was the toss-up between you know are you going to go for him, are you going to go for Pereira, and obviously you've decided because Lingard has got the um, the, the connection, if you will, with the squad. You know, would Pereira come in and have that instant connection? It's a risk. Mm. Yeah, uh, Ivan Tony up front. I mean, like I say, we're going on trans, uh, five yards valuation. So, I, realistically, would Brentford sell him, especially if they got promoted? Would they sell him for 18 million quid? Not a chance. Chances no are they probably want more than 18 million quid in the real world for him if they don't get promoted. Yeah. But I as I say, this is just a bit of fun. This is just sort of a little bit of fun and games that we're having. So, Rico Henry for 11 million quid to give... Again, both competition and cover. Probably probably cover in the short term, competition in the long term for Aaron yeah. Cresswell. Yeah. Um, but also for Masawaku, because I think Henry can also play further forwards as a wing back, as you know, yeah. whereas Cresswell could drop in at centre back. Yeah, I th I think he'd 
what I think you got to do is look at players you can do a couple of jobs, not just one. Mm. Because if you just go for a player yeah. who can do one, that limits us. And we haven't got Man City's ability to say, right, we'll put a world-class side out and then we'll have world-class backups in every position. We just can't do yeah. it. So, yeah, yeah, if you've got a player who can do a number of things, that's great for us. Yeah, and and yeah, I mean, you look at the next player I'm going to mention, uh, the freebie from Manchester City, Eric Garcia. Again, yeah. centre-back can play right-back. Yeah, versatility. Crow again. Crow was was a defensive midfielder as as his default position, but he can play central mid and he can play centre back. Again, versatility. Yeah. Um, and and then you've got you, your loan signing, if you will, of Adama Traore. <laughs> yeah. Again, a player that that is predominantly a winger, but. I don't know about you, but I look at Adama Traore and I just see a younger, stronger, faster and less injury prone version of Mikel Antonio. Yeah, and that's exactly why I buy him. Because I think you can take Antonio out of that side, drop Traore in and notice very little difference. Other mm. than Traore might have a bit more control and might be a, slight, a better finisher. Because let's face it, Antonio's first touch is either brilliant or awful, <laughs> and that's what makes there's Antonio no in between dangerous. with him, is there? <laughs> that's what makes Antonio dangerous because he doesn't know what he's going to do when the ball comes to him. So how on earth can the defenders? No, you know? no, he's very unorthodox. So, yeah, and that's one of his great strengths. But yeah, I'd have Traore in there. Mm. Um, and if the Traore um, loan didn't come off, then with the seven million you've got left in the kitty, you try and get Arnie in on a permanent. Yeah, but that team, I think, I mean, I'm trying to be realistic about next season because we're going to be on two fronts. Well, four effectively if you count the League Cup and FA Cup. Yep. I think we're going to have to sacrifice the League Cup because. It will stretch us too thin. Depending on how we're doing in the Europa League will depend how we attack the FA Cup. But I would suggest if we got top 10 and quarterfinals of the Europa League, that would be an excellent season next year because that is a big ask for our club to do that much. Mm. I'll take that. I mean, yes, I'd like to be in Europe again, but... Who knows? If somebody said to me at the start of the season, you'll come sixth, I would have laughed at them. So who knows? Could, Listen, could you, be a you've got to be in it to win that. it, Steve. you got to be in it to win it. Yeah, I mean, for me, Villarreal, you look what they, they did in the Europa League. I mean, let's be honest about it. Villarreal shouldn't be able to lay a glove on Manchester United, really. But... well. By yeah. hook or by um, crook, and it, it doesn't matter how you do it. it. You know, you could argue, yeah, but it was only on penalties. It was eleven ten, but they won. They got over the finishing line, and it doesn't matter how you do it. No, and when I watched Villarreal, I remember saying to James at the time, um, "Yeah, they looked to side technically and ability wise pretty comparable with us at our best last season." Mm -hmm. I didn't think there'd be a lot yeah. between the two teams. So it gives me hope for the Europa League. I mean, if we win the Europa League next year, just let's just go on a flight of fantasy here. We've won the Europa League. I, mm. I think that would uh, just be smash every West Ham fan's expectations. I, and as a, as a direct consequence of that, I, Steve, I don't know if you, you realise this, Champions if League. we win the Europa League, we get in the Champions League. See, so I'm old enough to remember when we got to the Cup Winners' Cup final with Brooking Bonds and that team then. And the whole journey was brilliant. And even though we lost in the final, it's one of my really powerful memories of being sort of 10, 11 I'm watching my stand. It really sticks with you. Like, I can't remember where we were away to. I think we were away to final, and everybody was expecting us to get thrashed. 
and Graham Padden with his sweet left foot knocks one in, and we lose two. Was that or was that Den Haag? Could be Den Haag. I'm I'm not sure. I mean, I'm you. As I, I know said, it was Frankfurt in the semi, wasn't it? Eintracht Frankfurt in the yeah. semi. I'm I, sure it was Den Haag, and I think was there a team called Ararat Yerevan in that run? Well, all I'm saying, as I said to you before, at my age, uh, memory sort of <laughs> a, a vague <laughs> of what might have happened rather than yeah. an intuitive tool you can call on. But I just, one of the things I remember was everybody being shocked in this particular match when we lost 2 1 and Graham Padden hammered in an absolute rocket of a left foot. We took the away goal back to Upton Park and beat them. And then we had the other game where we were 4 nil down away from home, got it back to 4-2, had to play behind closed doors because of crowd violence. And we got ah, through. it was Castilia. That was it, yeah. And we uh, got through on that as well. And those are, you know, as I said on the podcast before, my mum wouldn't let me start to watch it on sports night. So I'd be under <laughs> the uh, covers with my radio, trying not to cheer too loud when my stand scored a goal. <laughs> because I didn't want to realise I was still awake. But, you know, they're great memories. And if we had that sort of thing in the Europa League, I can guarantee, you know, I'm going back 40, 45 years now. I'm going back a long while. I can mm. guarantee every West Ham fan will take those memories with them all the way through their time supporting West Ham. So, yeah, I'd love us to win the Europa League. It would be incredible. And to say we couldn't. I, no. I really do believe that, you know, and I'm I'm not saying, you know, before anyone starts accusing me of saying we're going to win it, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is that if Villarreal can get to the final and beat, however they did it, doesn't matter, but beat Manchester United, a team of all that history, of that pedigree, a team that contained a player that not so long ago was the most expensive footballer ever in Paul Pogba. Yeah. Whether you think he's he, he's that good or not is irrelevant. That's the stature that this club is operating at against a team that until that Europa League victory, I, I think I heard it, not only had they never won a final, I don't think they'd even got to a final of any no, that... major competition ever. No. Against Manchester United, 20-time league champions, three <laughs> times champions of Europe. Oh, glorious, wasn't it? I loved it. I loved it. But what Villarreal did to them was they West ham them. They yeah. nicked them. So, exactly. So, if, if they could do it, Steve, I'm not saying we're going to. So, don't anyone watching this misunderstand me and say he's a deluded West Ham fan. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm not saying we're going to win it, ladies and gentlemen. But what I'm saying is, why can't we? Why yeah, can't we? I, if Villarreal can do what they did, why can't we? Let's I see. Think, I think we can win it. And what gives me most confidence about going into it is Moyes is quite tactically astute for things like that. You know, you look at some of the games we've had and, and equally some of the games where we've been outclassed. And Moyes has been tactically astute enough to cause them so many problems. They could, you know, we came away with a result. When we beat Wolves 4-0 and Leicester 3-0, I think everybody was sort of had their jaw, everybody's jaws dropped. Because, hang mm. on a minute, that wasn't expected at all. Yet, mm. he found a way to do it. And I think he'll be quite shrewd in the way we set up. Mm. I do think, though... Our league form will suffer somewhat because of the Thursday yeah. Sunday thing. Yeah, but I think that's I inevitable. Live, I can live with that, provided we're not fighting relegation. I don't care. I, I, I think if we had a if we had a season in the league that was okay, bordering on yeah. mediocre, but we were never in any danger realistically of a relegation. So let's say we finished tenth, give or take, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, ninth, whatever. But, but if we lifted the Europa League next season, oh, yeah. Every time. mate, 
Oh, I'd take yeah. that all day long. And and like I say, as a, as a happy consequence of that, the following season, you're playing in the Champions League. This is a team that a couple of seasons earlier almost got relegated from the Premier League and they win a, a Europa League and then get in the Champions League as well. If it happened, and it is a massive if. I'm not, I'm not stupid. I know it's a massive if. But like yeah. I say... You know, Villarreal's victory has just given me a little glimmer of hope. And and another little thing, I mean, this this has been a little bit of a season for the underdog in some competitions. You look at, I, I would argue that Leicester beating Chelsea in the FA Cup final was David slaying Goliath. Yeah. I, I You know, I know some people would say, yeah, but hang on a minute. Uh, at the time they locked horns, Leicester were above them in the league. Well, yeah, but they didn't finish above them in the league. And also in terms of their financial muscle, in terms of their broader history, not just in the last five years, but going beyond that, you know, you'd have to say that Chelsea are the bigger club. The fact that Leicester had never, they'd been in four finals of the FA Cup in their history, never won one. They were actually the club that had been in the most finals of the FA Cup and never won it until you know, two weeks ago. And then you look in at what's happened in France. Well, who won the French league, you know, a, a league that's been dominated for many years by Paris Saint-Germain with their, you know, oil backed billions with Mbappe, with Neymar, and they got beaten in a, in a one horse, you know, PSG got beaten in a, a one horse race, essentially where they were the only horse by a team of, you know, journeymen pros like Jose Font and yeah. players of that ilk, you know, so it can be done. Yeah. i tell you what, I'm going to put out there now as we come to an end, my dream, my absolutely dream season. Okay. My dream season, top eight, win the Europa League. Arsenal and Spurs do not qualify for Europe, we preferably Ooh. one relegated, if not both. Oh, you know, I, I, I think you're you're pushing your luck there a little bit. <laughs> but I am looking forward to Monday because we've got a family barbecue, and I'm meeting up with my Ooh. supporting brother-in-law, my Everton supporting brother-in-law, and my Arsenal supporting nephew. And it's you're going, going to have to be fun, a, aren't you? Oh, it's going to be the I will actually be the dictionary definition for gloating. I, I do intend to be insufferable all day, you know. I've already made a comment to my boss, uh, you know, I'll, who's an Arsenal fan, you know, I'll support the team in the top team this year then, shall I? <laughs> uh, it's, Brilliant. It's been, been glorious because it's been so many years since I've had anything to crow about. I'm now going to make oh, yeah. We're, might... we're so used to just sort of, you know, bobbing around in the lower reaches of the Premier League and all the rest of it, that when we get a season like we've just experienced, yeah, forgive us if we crow, for, forgive us if we sort of strut around like a peacock, but yeah. it doesn't well, happen often. Honest, Give us a break. Yeah, to be honest with you, Gage, I don't care if they forgive me or not. I'm still going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Good man. Before we wrap it up, Steve, and, and thank you very much indeed for your participation in this as usual. I'm going to do my usual sign out yeah, for this little girl here. This will be in the description below the stream. If it goes out, I mean, I'm going to watch it back and make sure it looks good. So if you don't see this, ladies okay. and gentlemen, I looked at it and thought it didn't look right. So whatever. Um, so if you're watching it, then it obviously passed the Gatesy thumbs up test. So this young lady here needs our help. Your help, my help, Steve's help, everyone's help. Um, she's a six year old girl. Her name is Isla Caton. She is suffering from neuroblastoma, which, if you don't know what it is, is a really rare and aggressive form of cancer, usually afflicting children. And there ain't no treatment for this on the NHS. So if you're expecting, well, what's the problem? She can just rock up at her local hospital, say I've got a problem. They go bish bash bosh and she's on her way. Nah, not happening. 
So in this middle of this pandemic, guys, just put yourself in this this position. We've all had a crap last 12 months or so. But you try putting it, putting yourself in a position where you've got a six-year-old child fighting for her life and you can't get the treatment that you need in this country. So you've got to try and find the money for the flights to wherever it is you've got to go in the world to get the treatment, the treatment itself, your living quarters, your living costs, the bills in the UK that are still going to come in, because don't think for a minute that, you know, their landlord or their mortgage lender is going to go, don't worry, we understand, you don't need to worry about, of course, they, they're they going to, the bills are still going to come in, guys. Um, absolute hell on earth, and I'm speaking as a father of three, and Steve's a father as well, so I, I, I know he backs me up on this. Um there's a PayPal on the uh, on the banner. There's a Just Giving on the banner. And as I say, all this information will be in the description below the stream on um, Facebook, on YouTube, and all the rest of it. Um, we need you to help them. We um, And we're doing our bit as well when we can. Um, there's no donation that you can give that's too small. If it's a pound, fine. If it's £10, fine. If it's more, brilliant. Whether you can or whether you can't donate, take this message, take the banner, the information on it, put it on your social media platforms with a little explanation of what it's all about. Um, put it on your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, all the rest of it. In fact, put it on a WhatsApp message, send it out to friends, family, groups, all the rest of it. This little girl, I wish I could paint it another way, ladies and gentlemen. But I need to focus your minds. This little girl is fighting for her life at six years of age. And if she doesn't get the treatment, she's going to die. I don't mean to be melodramatic. But actually, I do because I need to to focus your minds. She will not be much longer of this earth if she doesn't get the treatment that she needs. So there it is in, in black and white, ladies and gentlemen. If I have got your attention, if you feel that you can do something to help, put a couple of quid in this pot and let's try and get this get the elder treatment she needs. Thank you very much indeed for listening. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we end it. Mic drop moment. Steve, again, thank you for your time. And... Uh, we go we go again on another stream down the down the line, I am sure. Well, I'm sure All we that will. remains for us. Come on, you irons. <laughs> this is all that remains. Come, Come on, on, you irons. Stay safe, ladies and gentlemen. Get spoiled.